I get asked a lot about my Visual Studio Code setup, you know, the theme that I use, the fonts that I use, in some cases, the extensions that I use as well. I do have all that information in the description, um, but I am fully aware that, uh, you know, not a lot of people read the description and that's fine. It's sort of hidden away. And that video was also about two years ago as well. So, you know, not a lot of people that are here now were here when I made that video. So I thought I'd just update it, even though not a huge amount has changed, thought I'd update it to show the themes, the fonts, extensions, and you know, all that stuff. Of course, if you like the video at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can become a member or a patron, use the link in the description below. But with all that out of the way, let's get theming. So I've zoomed out a little bit from what I normally do. You don't need to be able to read the code, so don't worry about that. This is just to show off the theme that I've got, which is IU Mirage Bordered. So if I load up my command palette, and I've still got the color theme at the top from when I did that visual other Visual Studio Code video, uh, you can see IU Mirage Bordered there. There are a few others. So there's IU Mirage, which is kind of the same, just a bit darker. I prefer that one. You've got Dark Bordered, which is just dark. And then there is an IU Light somewhere around here. Oh, it's up here. There we go. IU Light help <laughs> that's really bright though so we tend to stick then to stick with the mirage border because it's quite nice oh and also if you look at the top up here these tabs are different i don't really know why but it's sort of it's, it's just a little bit more kind of separation of interests i suppose <clears throat> with the bordered one so actually get that theme you can come over here to the extensions which is like three squares and another square over here and then I could do IU and you just install that as part of the IU theme pack. And it's this one you want from TB. Uh, I believe this is not the original author of the IU theme. But this is someone that's ported over uh, or ported it over to VS Code because I believe it was originally a Sublime theme. The icon pack as well is IU as well. I did use a different one for some time, but I just thought you know, the IU one's quite nice and it's... It's a bit more cohesive with the rest of the colors and you've got some nice things. So you've got the Jupiter one, the JSON one's quite nice down here. Um, you know, you've got YAML, you've got Markdown, the Git, ignore stuff, images. That's quite a good repo to actually show off actually because there's a lot of stuff just <laughs> milling around. Um, but yeah, I use IU Mirage Bordered for the colors. For the fonts, uh, of my font, I use something called Vera, um, Fira Code, which is kind of a code version to Fira Sans, which is quite popular if you use like Pop! OS as your Linux distribution, uh, then you already know what it is. In terms of actually um, installing it, what you need to do is you need to just search up Fira Code, uh, oh, Fire Code, Fira Code, Nerd Font is the one I have. And then you can go to here, I guess. And then search, I suppose you could probably just search up nerd fonts because it doesn't actually have a separate page. Uh, fear of code, where on earth is that? There it is, fear of code. And what the nerd font does is it allows you to get all these icons. As, uh, this branch icon, for example, I think this is the only one on the screen at the moment that is a special thing. Um, but I use this for my terminal, which is a separate thing. I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, but yeah, having the nerd font just adds all those symbols in. I think it adds a few other things as well, but I don't really remember what. So you can just download that zip and then extract that zip somewhere, install all the fonts, depending on how you would do it in your operating system. And then to actually set it, what you do is you go to your settings. You could do control comma. And then from here, you would put in the name of the font. Now this in VS Code is, I still haven't like fully figured out how it works i'm not sure if it looks for the the file name or the name of the font within the file or something else in the metadata uh, fear of code nerd font works like this i believe it is the file name but there have been other fonts that haven't worked when you've used either and i just don't really know how that works so if someone knows how the parser for that works then do let me know uh but yeah that's just how you set it here and you can set it in the user settings and it'll go everywhere or if for, you know for whatever reason you want to do it in the workspace only you can do that uh but i believe the user settings override it because this is the default i would guess and then i just have it like that Speaking of the terminal, since I brought it up, I'm not going to talk about it in a great amount of detail because I've talked about it in a different video and pretty much nothing's changed. Only the prompt has changed ever so slightly, but it's called Starship. It's really nice. Uh, it pretty much looks like this out the box. If I, uh, you know, I'll quickly show it off. Why not? Uh, if I do config slash starship.toml, 
this is my uh, configuration. So I have time disabled to have, you know, just a character. This is the, well, yeah, this is the successful one. And then the erroring one, it emits the error code. I do not remember where I've done that. But there are a few like get things, a few memory stuffs and, you know, the battery and whatever. You can also like truncate certain things. So, you know, the prompt isn't too long. But for the most part, it's pretty much the default style. So if you want to learn more about the terminal, I'd recommend going and looking at that video that I also made about two years ago. But that's a bit more relevant because the config and, and the process and everything hasn't really changed. In terms of extensions, I haven't really planned much about what I'm going to show you with regards to this. But I'll show you a few cool ones that I have. And if I get rid of this from the search, uh, this auto doc string one is actually really cool. So what you can do, this will show it off. If you have a Python file um, and you do a function and you can do this triple quote and it will do a doc string for you. And you can also set up um, which doc string format you want. So I have it set to numpy doc because that's the one I prefer. Um, and that's really cool. Uh, the black formatter, yeah. So all these tools are now in extensions as well. So like black, I saw and all that stuff is all there. Uh, what is document this? Is this the same thing? Oh, this is the same thing, but for JavaScript. Okay, haven't used that in a while. This git graph is actually really useful. So I can probably do it here actually, because I'm in a repo. Uh, so you can see like this blue one is the main branch and you can see all the different commits. You can see all the different branches. And if you click on a commit, you can actually see what's changed. So you can load up the, that's probably not a good example actually. Um, that's probably not good. Well, that might be a good example. Uh, so this publish one, you can see you can then load up the changes. You can see that I, yeah, uh, upload and download artifact v4 are weird on GitHub Actions, but that's a different topic. Uh, and my personal email address is in there as well, so I'm going to have to blur that. That's amazing. <laughs> but that's really cool. That's a really cool one to have. Excel Viewer is also a really cool one to have if you work with CSVs and Excel files. This will show you. Um, or, yeah, what I tend to do is I tend to open the CSV and then there's this little thing in the corner that allows you to uh, to load it up separately. There is another CSV one. Yeah, Rainbow CSV. So if you just want to look at the CSV and you can have a look at this uh, using rainbow colors, which is cool. There's all the Python ones as well, which are all their live share, which seems to work better than used to. This is a pretty cool thing. I'm not sure if it's installed by default, but it will essentially allow pair programming over the internet. So you'll both have, have access to the same environment. You'll both be able to code in the same place. You'll both be able to use the terminal as well. So you do need to make sure you trust the person you're um, live sharing with. But that's proven really useful a few times. Yeah, there's iSort as well. There's hot dog stands. So let's not talk about that. A few other things. Git lens uh, is kind of okay. That's kind of okay. There's a few, yeah, SQLite viewer is quite nice. I think I've got two. I forget which one is the good one. <laughs> I think. I think, I think they're both useful for different things. I think this one's um, better for quick stuff, and then this one's better for actually being able to do stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got the sorcery one, which I've disabled now because it's not free anymore. Big sad. Other, you know, like YAML ones or whatever. I don't actually have too many. I do need to get rid of some of these, actually. <laughs> but yeah, there are plenty of really cool extensions out there. And if you use or find any that are really cool and you want to let me know, then please do. Because uh, I'm sure there are some really, really cool extensions uh, that exist that I just don't have. I, I really want to find one at some point. I never got around to it. That does, like, code templating and stuff. Um... So you can type a specific thing and then you'll be given, well, similarly to the document generator, I suppose you can type a specific thing and it will like, you know, expand or explode the template out into like um, full on code. That seems really cool to have one. I'm pretty sure an extension for that exists. I just don't have it at the moment. So yeah, someone do let me know if that exists. Hopefully that's useful to everyone. Let me know in the comments which parts of uh, my setup you're planning to implement yourself, whether you're planning to go to full hog and just completely copy me or whether you just want to use the fonts or the colors or whatever. If you do have a different configuration, then also put it down in the comments because, you know, people you know like different things. Not everyone might like what I've got here. And as I said with the extensions, it will allow people to find what they like uh, and stuff. So yeah, that'd be really cool. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Roshaman III for being so generous. If you're currently looking at this code and thinking, oh, indents, 
colons, what are you doing? I just want to use braces in my Python. Then you can. In last week's video, I covered an extension called Python, which lets you do just that. Uh, so go watch that if you're interested in that. And I will see you in the next video for whatever we do next.